A couple weeks ago, I received my power bill, which was a bit higher than usual. It got me thinking about how much of that energy is actually used by my computer. And that's simple enough to test. So I bought this real Rand power meter from Amazon for a reasonable price. And there was an impressive amount of them that looked identical from different companies. It was weird, but more on how this guy works in a little bit. Because right now I want to show you what the plan is, what it is that I'm going to be testing. So I've got this machine here, of course, it's my computer. It's comprised of a Ryzen 7 3700X on an AORUS X570 motherboard, two 16 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 RAM running at 3600 megahertz, two M.2 NVMe SSDs, one Gen 3, the other Gen 4, one SATA SSD, seven fans, including the two on the radiator, the AIO pump, and last but certainly not least, the power hog of a GPU, a 3080 Ti from Nvidia. And all of this stuff is going to draw power, of course, in some regard, and all of it will be supplied by the 850 watt Corsair HX850. But that's not the whole picture because typically you have peripherals. You have a monitor or two, a mouse, keyboard, controllers, racing wheel, speaker system, headphones, rechargeable batteries, external drives, lamps, you name it. The point is, is that there's several things outside of PC on the periphery, you might say, that are a part of a setup. Even if they aren't directly attached, they consume energy. But for the sake of this test, I want to demonstrate a more modest setup. So the only thing that will be plugged into the power meter beside the PC itself will be my main monitor. It's a 1440p Asus Tough Gaming VG27 AQL 1A, and it's quite power hungry compared to my second monitor, which is a 10 year old 16 Hertz 1080p monitor from LG. But anyways, with the monitor and PC plugged in, I think it will represent a mid to high range power consumption setup. The CPU I have isn't very power hungry at 65 watts and the power supply is platinum rated, but it's all balanced out by the 3080 Ti. So for a test, I'm going to use my computer for three hours. I've got some stuff to do like video editing and whatnot. Then I'll spend some time gaming and see what kind of wattage I've pulled. But first, back to the power meter. It's a very simple device. And if you haven't seen one before, it just basically works by plugging it into the outlet with this side and then plugging it as whatever you want to monitor on this side. And what I will do is plug in my monitor and PC into a power bar and then the power bar into the meter, meter into the wall, voila, presto, you're good to go. And as far as functions, this particular meter has several, but I'm only interested in three of them. One is the cost per kilowatt, two is the current wattage, and three is the accumulated energy usage displayed as kilowatt hours. And just for a reminder, kilowatt hours is essentially a thousand watts of energy sustained for one hour. So if I had a monstrous machine with like two 3090s in it and a thread ripper and who, else, who knows what else connected to it, that might actually pull that kind of power. But uh, as far as my machine goes, it's gonna take a bit longer than that to actually reach a kilowatt hour. All right, so I just passed the three hour mark. I spent about an hour video editing, doing things like that. The other hour I was doing more web surfing, stuff like that. And then I just spent the last hour playing some video games. I was playing Yakuza for a bit and I paid, played a bit of Rocket League. So I think it kind of demonstrates a reasonable amount of time I'd spend a day on my computer. Usually, honestly, I'd probably spend more, maybe closer to four plus hours on my computer, which when I really think about it, it's quite a lot. But anyways, it looks like I've only consumed I don't know if you can see this very well, but it only consumed not even one kilowatt hour. It's cost me five cents, essentially five US cents to run my computer for those three hours. And if I change the function here, you can see I changed it to kilowatt hours and I've consumed 0.765 kilowatt hours, which is not a lot until you think about how much you spend in a year. Okay, so we consumed 0.76 five kilowatt hours of electricity for just over three hours of miscellaneous computer use. It's simple enough to get our annual cost. We just multiply our kilowatt hours by the cost. Here in BC, we're at about 9.39 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, in this video, I wanna talk about USD. We're gonna, we're always talking about USD just to keep things simple. So, and that is gonna be seven cents, roughly seven cents per kilowatt hour USD. So multiply this usage by our seven cents and we get a total of 5.4 cents for three hours of use. And like I said, it's pretty, pretty cheap, right? Multiply it by our annual cost. So by days, that's gonna get us a total of $19.55 USD. That's 
that's cheap. It's not bad at all. I expect I probably use more than that on a yearly basis, probably in the range of 30 to $40 a year, but that's still reasonable. And like I said, we have very cheap power here. So to give it a better idea of what you might pay, let's compare it to other places around the world. So let's start with Toronto. Our friends in Toronto will spend around $25, 13 cents. Now over the border in Chicago, you might expect to spend about $36 and 30 cents. Down in Miami, we're looking at $30.71. But over in San Francisco, you can expect to spend $86.56. Over four times what I would pay here. Now they do have some kind of credit that would bring that cost down a bit, but it's still very expensive. Now outside North America, let's say in London, you can pay about $53.05. Our friends down under, say, in Melbourne, they're gonna be paying something like $39.09. .09. And lastly, on the extremes, let's look at other places. Another favorite of mine is the big island of Hawaii, where you can expect to pay $98.20. Over in the US Virgin Islands, just off of Puerto Rico there, they're gonna be paying something like 111 and 69 cents. And finally, in the Solomon Islands, in this region here, they're gonna be paying a whopping $201.04. Ladies and gentlemen, winner, winner, chicken dinner, that's a lot of cash. But that's assuming it's used in the first 50 kilowatt hours of each month that they actually have, it actually goes up from there. So that was like the cheapest X estimate I found on their website. Please double check that for me. I checked like four times. I hope I got it right. But the moral of the story is just don't live on small islands to, to do PC gaming. I would recommend maybe doing another hobby. Maybe you can take up, I don't know, paddle boarding because it's going to be a lot cheaper than PC gaming. Arguably more fun and better for your health too, I think. So that's where we're at. A look at how much you might spend for a moderate to high power consuming PC over a year. Probably more moderate, to be honest. I can imagine many people who play games for several hours a day with multi-monitor setups, which end up using a lot more power. Like, I didn't use that much here. So I actually wanted to test that out a bit more. I did a quick test with both my monitors plugged in. I had a lamp running, an external drive going while watching a YouTube video on one monitor and playing Metro Exodus on Extreme on the other monitor, the usage went up by about 40% at 1.344 kilowatt hours for three hour session, bumping up my cost to $34.34 a year. And in Hawaii, for example, that'd be $172.53. At the end of the day though, this is just part of using the computers. It's just expensive. So if you think about going to the store with your car, you gotta pay for gas, right? That's just how it goes. But what about when you're not using your PC? How much power are you actually wasting? Like what does your computer consume when you're idling? So to figure that out, I set up the meter the same way and just let my computer idle for two hours. Okay, so we've got 0 0.259 kilowatt hours split in half, gives us about 0 0.129 kilowatt hours per hour, which for me just costs shy of a penny. It's pretty cheap. But let's look at the big picture. Continuing from the same thread as last time, let's assume I use my computer for three hours a day, leaving it to idle for the remaining 21 hours. Excluding those three hours of active computer use, it will consume a total of about 2.716 kilowatt hours, costing 19 cents. Now compound that over a year. All right, I know what you're thinking. How many people are actually going to leave their computer on 24 seven, 365, right? Well, that number ain't zero because at the very least, I can look out my window any night of the week and see at least three computers running, two of which are dual monitor setups, running all the time. But anyways. Now compound that over a year and it'll cost me $69.39. It's not insane, but let's put it into perspective. Let's go with Toronto again, which will cost 24.4 cents a day to idle, 21 hours a day. Let's roll that up to 25 cents. And what you're doing every day is essentially taking a quarter putting it in a piggy bank, and then at the end of the year, throwing it into the abyss. Congratulations, you're an idiot. You just wasted 90 bucks that could have been spent on that extra 16 gigs of RAM you needed. Moving on to Miami, $109.05. Chicago, $128.87. 
California, unbelievable, $307.32. My God, could you imagine actually wasting that much money idling? All right, across the pond, $188.35. Back in Dingo territory, $138.79. And in Hawaii, you can say aloha to your bill of $348.65. Virgin Islands, $396.54. And the Solomon Islands, get this, $713.76. And it goes up from there, up to $800. $42.64, depending on the billing period. This is Future Nick here, editing this video right now, and there's an important footnote that I actually missed, and it's that depending on where you live, some percentage of every kilowatt consumed is going to be adding to pollution and carbon emissions. Something to remember. Anyways, back to past prepared me. So what can we do to mitigate this wasteful practice? Fortunately, you can find power settings in your operating system that will help outside just manually turning your machine off when you're done. I mean, sometimes you get up from your computer for a minute and that minute turns into hours. I've done it, it just, it happens sometimes. So in Windows, the power and sleep settings are very simple. You can adjust how long until the computer will go to sleep or when the display should turn off. There are some advanced settings as well, but I'm not gonna go into them right now. So finally, I'd like to go back to the car and gas analogy. Imagine this, I drive out to the beach, I park my car, I leave it running, I'm only hanging out at the beach for just an hour or so, whatever. When I leave, I go back to my car, hopefully nobody's stolen it, or called the police because you know, it is illegal actually to idle here in BC. But I head home, I park the car, and I leave it running all night, ready and warmed up for work next morning. I wouldn't do this. Most people wouldn't do this. I don't think anybody would actually do this because it's stupid. And I don't want to be too sanctimonious here, but so is leaving your computer idling. So with a little forethought and simple settings tweak, we can all save a little bit of money and have cleaner air to breathe. This has been Tech Literate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. Oh, so American quarters flip like this. Guess Canadian quarters flip that way. Fun fact. A couple of weeks ago, I received my mu for sakes. Here we go. It's a 27-inch 1440 poo. 1440 poo. AQL1A VG27 AQL1A. It's not that hard, dude. So let's compare. <clears throat> compare. And in Hawaii, for example, that'd be $172. <laughs>